Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Shampoo is a 1975 American comedy film that was directed by Hal Ashby, and it stars Warren Beatty, Julie Christie, Goldie Hawn, Lee Grant, Jack Warden, and Carrie Fisher. The storyline goes that 30-something George Roundy is a Beverly Hills hairdresser who spends as much time sleeping with his female clients as he does doing their hair. Whether they want to admit it or not, all of the women in his life are for the most part aware that they are not the only one that he's sleeping with. And some, such as wealthy and married Felicia Carp, have a stronger emotional dependence on George than they would like to admit. George's current girlfriend is Jill, and she's an up-and-coming actress. Jill's best friend is Jackie Sean, who's one of George's old girlfriends, who left him because he couldn't make a true commitment to her. In turn, Jackie is currently having an affair with Lester Carp who's Felicia's wealthy businessman husband. George is unhappy working at the salon that's owned by Norman, with whom he is constantly butting heads. George wants to open his own salon, but he doesn't have the financial resources to do that, and no bank will loan him the money for that venture. Felicia convinces Lester to consider investing in George. On Monday, November 4, 1968, the eve of the presidential election, this group spends the evening together. First at a dinner party that's hosted by Lester, and then another private party to boot. Over the course of the evening, George may come to the realization of what he wants in life, both professionally and personally but achieving happiness will depend upon others in his life. All who have only known George up to this time as an uncommitted partner. Warren Beatty and Julie Christie were lovers on and off since 1967, but they ended up breaking up for good during the making of this film. They did end up remaining friends and later worked together in another movie called Heaven Can Wait. Miss Christie reportedly disliked the role she played of Jackie, but she did it strictly for Warren Beatty. Lee Grant states that basically everyone on the set knew that Goldie Hawn and Warren Beatty were sleeping together during this production, even though at the time he was supposedly still involved with Julie Christie. And that's probably the big thing that led to their breakup, or at least part of it. Warren Beatty came up with the idea for the film in 1967, and in his mind, he called it hair. He later changed that to avoid confusion with the rock musical of that name. Paul Simon, who wrote the score for the film, also wrote the title song, entitled Have a Good Time. But Warren Beatty convinced director Hal Ashby to ditch it in favor of the Beach Boys wouldn't it be nice? The film is loosely based on The Country Wife, a comedy whose protagonist, Horner, claims to be impotent in order to be allowed into the company of married women, who he then seduces. George in this film would be considered non-threatening due to the stereotypical thought that hairdressers were gay. The character of George is purportedly to be based on Hollywood elite stylist to the stars, Jay Sebring. Sadly, Sebring was one of the five people brutally murdered by the members of the Manson family cult in August of 1969, of which Sharon Tate was included. Sebring was an ex-boyfriend of Tate. At the time, though, she was married to filmmaker Roman Polanski. The twisted web that this film weaves can't be far off from the truth of real-life Hollywood. Everyone there seems to be sleeping with everybody else. You lose track, even in the film, as you do in real life. Perhaps to give audiences the impression 
that the film is really current. The movie poster features pictures of the three leads, Warren Beatty, Julie Christie, and Goldie Hawn, as they appear in 1975. Not as the characters with dated hairstyles that they sport in the film set in 1968. At the formal election night party, there are televisions going that feature coverage from Walter Cronkite of CBS News and Chet Huntley and David Brinkley of NBC News. And the film really does take you back to that time. As you're in the kitchen of Jill's apartment, it's a classic 1960s to 70s setting down to the wooden salad fruit bowl and the hanging plants that you see throughout the apartment. The movie includes archival footage from that 1968 Republican National Convention, which nominated Richard Nixon for president and Spiro Agnew as vice president. By the time of this 1975 release date of the film, both Nixon and Agnew had resigned from office due to separate criminal activity on their part. Agnew resigned in 73 and Nixon resigned in 74. Carrie Fisher reveals that because her character claims she has never had her hair done, her real life hair was deemed too short and she had to wear a wig. However, this wig that she put on wasn't very convincing and therefore they put a headscarf on to kind of mask it and to make it look more real. She also states that she was really only cast in this role, mainly through family connections from her mom. And she states that when she sat down to read with Warren Beatty, he was eating the whole time he was reading lines. It's also said that the costume department asked Warren Beatty if her character needed to have a bra on or not. Beatty looked at her and said, is she wearing one now? They responded, yes. Then Beatty wanted to see her without a bra. After that, he immediately said, let's go without. This being Carrie Fisher's debut role in film. She was just 17 when she acted in this movie. And her mother, Debbie Reynolds, who was a force to be contended with in Hollywood, knew what Warren Beatty was like. And she threatened him. She told him not to go near her daughter during the filming. But he didn't listen at all. He propositioned her four times during the filming. Each time she turned him down. Take a look at this movie. It's not a great movie, but it's still a pretty funny watch. It gets better towards the end. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.